Hey friends, are you ready for some rustic, primitive, even some country decor? Well, this is the video for you. We got some thrift flips, we've got some trash to treasures, and inspirations galore. I thrifted this box from Goodwill and I am excited to do it over. I love the tall handle on it and it's a sturdy box. So I'm going to take this off-white color of craft paint and I'm going to give it a paint job of all over of two coats of this. Now I didn't really like the coverage so I darkened it up with some antique wax a little bit so you can see I just added a little drop or two to my paint and mixed it in and it came out a little bit darker. I added some baking soda to the paint there wasn't much left and I sponged on uh, and made a textured uh, paint on the front and the back of this box and I think it worked really well to cover up the paint job from the original box. I sanded it down just a little bit because it was quite heavy on the texture. It still is but I like it a little bit better. And then I took some of my distressing spray. This is from Tim Holtz. I will have a, a link down in the description for this for you if you're interested. And I just gave it a quick spray just to age it a little bit. And then I went around the whole box around the edges with my paintbrush with a little bit of black paint on it to just highlight the edges. I want this to look distressed and aged like I always do with my decor. This one I got a little bit heavy down in the corner but that's okay. It comes off. There we go. And it just adds to the distressing. I got this home sweet home stencil in a pack of a bunch of stencils from Timu and I'll link that down in the description if you're interested. These are really nice stencils. They're thick, they're uh, great to work with, easy to clean, and I really, really like using these. They're very good quality. So I'm just setting that on the top of the box and I am uh, just dabbing some paint on the top to get that black paint down in my stencil. This came out great and I used my spray matte sealer to seal the box in and it is finished. I thrifted this basket from Goodwill and I love the shape of it. Not so much the design, but it has a lot of detail in it and I really love it. So I'm going to take off this little bow and I tried to sand off the hearts on the front and the back and they did not sand off very well. Sorry about the rooster noise. So I took my dark stain, which is an 8 ounce bottle of antique wax. I filled it with 8 ounces of water and I added a touch of black paint, probably about a tablespoon, and mix that all together in a bigger container that I use quite often on my uh, projects. And so I love to use this stain on my baskets, and here you can see why. It gives it a, dip, a deep, rich color, and I just love the highs and lows that it gives you, and it's just my favorite thing to do with these baskets that just need a little bit of love and care. So I did that all over and I did the slats in the middle but I didn't do the middle part. I didn't bother because as you can see I'm going to be covering it up with this material. This is black and tan checked homespun material and I get this from Hobby Lobby but I'm pretty sure you can get this online. If I can find a link I will um, attach that in the description as well. So just like a belt, I kind of went inside the loops there. I took a safety pin and uh, put that on the end so it was easy to grab. And I just uh, pulled that through those loops all the way around to cover that up. I really love how this came out. And it's just one of my favorite things to do with these baskets is the dark stain 
and then adding that homespun material, it just gives it such a rich, deep look. Cut that off and then just uh, glued underneath one of the little loops there so you couldn't see it. And then I took a rusty star that I had, a little one, and I glued that to the front. And then this flip is done and I am just in love with this basket. It has such a great rustic country look to it now. I'm calling this one my trash to treasure because I don't know what anyone does with one of these once they're empty. The Ferrero collection, those little chocolates that you can get. I think my mother likes to give me, give me certain things like this to challenge me to see what I can do with them. So she said, here you go, see what you can do. So I separated the two, took off the sticker that I could. The middle one there, I could not get that off, but that's okay. We're painting the top. I sprayed it with a little bit of clear matte spray paint and that way uh, the paint would stick really well to the top and the bottom. I sprayed those both. I used a light colored paint on the top and then the bottom is going to get this folk art wrought iron uh, color of paint. I will put that down in the description. The top color is just a oops paint from Lowe's or Home Depot. It's just an off-white color. So I'm giving both of these, the top and the bottom, two coats. Now I have this paper I got from Zazzle a long time ago and I've used it a bunch as you can see it's all cut up. But I have this one piece here that I want to put on the top of my box and I cut it out and it's not fully there but that's okay because I'm going to use a little bit of water and wet down my decoupage paper. That works really well to rip the edges and it gives it an organic look and it just makes it look better than just straight edges for what I'm doing. So I went all the way around just, just dabbing water from my finger on it and then pulling it back. It's so thin that this works really well. Once my box top was dry, I took some Mod Podge and put that on the middle top part so that I could uh, add my decoupage paper. I set that on there and made sure it was fairly straight and then used my brush with a little bit of Mod Podge to get the edges to stay down and then I gave it a nice coat all over the top to seal it in. Now for the bottom part, I'm taking these uh, battery operated rice lights and I'm going to glue them into the bottom inside of my, my little container here. So these are wired. I wouldn't use them if they were not the wired ones. They have plastic ones. I don't know if the plastic would hold up to the hot glue, but I just did the corners uh, to help hold that in and then tucked it all in, turned it on, and put my lid on. Now I'm going to just sand down the box so that you can see the lights through the top. I sanded down the decoupage paper a little bit as well and I'm just giving this a distressed look and it also allows the lights to come through where you sanded. You'll be able to see that a little bit here as I uncover some of the paint from the top. I did seal it with some clear spray paint, matte clear Rust-Oleum, and then I also, there was a little crack in one of the corners, so I took the controller for the lights and ran that through the crack and around to the back and attached it so it was an easy on-off switch that you can attach so you don't have to open the whole box.
I've had this plate mat in my stash for a really long time and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it but I decided today that I wanted to get it out of the way and use some of my dark stain and put it around the top. It didn't really change it any and then I went ahead and grabbed my sandpaper and sanded around the edges to give it a distressed look. It again didn't change it a whole lot because it was already looking distressed but I didn't really want to paint this because I wanted a dark uh, rustic look to it so I took some Mod Podge and some decoupage paper and I cut the decoupage paper down so that it would fit into the middle. I'll leave the other half for something else. And this one has a little uh, bee on it and some uh, maybe even a butterfly. I don't know. It's kind of a weird abstract little piece, but I kind of liked it in this setting. So I took my Mod Podge and just gave it a good coat in the very middle and went all the way around with it. And then I added my paper to the top and made sure that it was sealed in really nicely. I also took my plastic wrap and I put it over the top with my roller and I rolled it in. It's a very textured material so I wanted to make sure that uh, the paper was in there and I didn't care if it came through with that basket weave. I thought it would look just fine. So I got that pushed in there and just rolling it all on so it will stay down. I then took a, my razor blade and cut around the edges where I had it a little bit too long. It was just a couple little spots there. And then I took my Mod Podge and sealed in the picture so that it would not come up. It also makes it easier to clean. I added some jute rope around the edge to make it look more finished and I think this is done. This is the day of getting stuff out of my stash and getting rid of it, figuring out what I want to do with it. So I have this little wired holder. It's got little, three little slots in there to put uh, some jars or whatever you want in there. So I wanted to, because it's just so small, I wanted to make it bigger. I wanted to make it stand out. So I cut this piece of scrap wood down. I love using little pieces of scrap wood for this because it just uses it up and it doesn't go in the fire. I can actually make something really cool with these little pieces. So I'm going to uh, stain it with the dark stain that I have again, antique wax, 8 ounces, and then I pour that in a jar. 8 ounces of water, I pour that in the jar, and then a, about a tablespoon of black paint and mix it in really well, and it comes out with this nice dark stain that I just love. Taking a drill bit that's a little bit bigger than my little feet that I picked out for the bottom, and I'm going to put a hole in the bottom of my stand. Now I'm not going to go all the way through. I'm going to leave just a little bit so it doesn't go through the top. I don't want it to show, um, and I want to make sure that uh, they fit in there nicely, though, so they don't come out. Now before I add my feet, I want to make sure this is attached to the wire holder. So I took some wire and I bent it over and cut it so that I could make little, kind of like little staples to hold the wire in. And so I'm just going to set it on there and make sure it's centered and then take those little pieces of wire that I bent over and I'm going to put those over the wire in that little holder and just one on each end holds it in nicely. I didn't use any glue or anything. That was kind of my goal. Now that that's on there, I can go ahead and glue in my feet. I didn't want to put those in until I was done hammering, so there we go. Those are all glued in, and I think this looks so cute. I had these little jars. I bought a whole big pack of them to do something with a long time ago, and I still have a bunch of them. They have clear or opaque lids on them, so I'm going to take those and 
uh, spray paint them black so that they will match the whole aesthetic that I'm going for with this, a little rustic primitive uh, little organizer. And there we go. I sprayed them and then sealed them with the uh, Rust-Oleum Clear Spray Paint added those in and I think this looks so cute. Now it could just go like this but I also have a piece of homespun material. I'm just gonna wrap it around it and give it a little bow and I think this came out so cute. What do you think? What do you think of my country rustic primitive decor that I've come up with? I hope you like it. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite if you have one. I will leave links down in the description to everything that I can find that I use today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It helps my channel a lot. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.